name is Emily Kerman, and for the past seven years, I have repeatedly tried and failed to publish my book. And here's my story. So, where do I even begin? Alright, well, first, let me talk a little bit about the publishing industry, if you're not familiar with it. So, there's really two main routes you can take to publish your book. Well, technically three, and we'll talk about that third option in a bit. But, the two main legitimate routes of publishing your book are traditional publishing and self-publishing. So, traditional publishing is when um, you get um, a deal with a traditional press, they'll pay you in advance, and then um, sometimes you can get royalties, sometimes you will not, depending on your contract. Um, and also, for those who don't know, royalties are pretty much uh, profits that the book makes, um, or a certain percentage of the profits of the book. And then there's self-publishing. And self-publishing is when is a newer form, though it's been around technically since publishing itself has been, um, and but it's become more prominent in recent years. So for self-publishing, basically you uh, do the entire publishing process yourself. You edit your book, you do your own cover design, uh, or you hire someone to do those things, and then um, you publish them. Either the two main publishing self-publishing platforms are uh, Amazon and the other one is Ingram Spark uh, and Amazon is free, Ingram Spark costs a little bit of money. We'll talk more about that in a sec. So those are your two main routes that you go into. Now there is a third option. Um, those are called vanity presses and those are scams. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk more about them and uh, my history with them. But pretty much, you, it's like a traditional publisher, but you have to pay them up front. And also, the thing with a traditional press, though, is that either um, you don't have to pay a single penny or they pay you, which is called an advance. Well, in vanity presses, you pay the vanity press. So you basically have to fork up cash like you would in self-publishing, and you don't get full royalties, and you don't even have full rights copyright pretty much you don't own the full copyright usually some vanity presses allow you to some don't but also they don't really do much because how they make their money is basically from authors so they're not actually making profits from books they're making their profit from authors so yeah uh never do that so i wrote uh, my book uh, with my writing partner grace um when I was 15. Uh, well, we finished when I was 15. We, we wrote it when I was 14. Uh, I guess she was technically 15. Uh, we finished towards the end of our freshman year and um, after we finished it, like we completed the book, our first draft, uh, we knew we wanted to publish it. Uh, we were very proud of it. Um, and we honestly thought it was a good book that could legit get published. Keep in mind, this was back in 2015. Now, for those who don't remember, or uh, who choose not to remember 2015, 2015 was kind of the end of the YA dystopian era. There was a lot of books and movies coming out still at this point, um, though that was kind of dying down um, about YA dystopian books. And, um, you know, the Hunger Game craze. Now, another thing that happened in 2015, um, the election was going on. We all know what happened in 2016. If you live in America, Trump was elected. That was a whole thing. Uh, but we, we didn't write our book during that. We were editing our book, but we didn't write our book during that era. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because um, really starting in 2015, but 2016 was really when a lot of this stuff started kicking off uh, is when 
the industry shifted to contemporary. Now is YA contemporary books. And um, that was going on in the market of the traditional publishing. Why do I bring this up? Well, I was a 15 year old girl. Myself and my writing partner were two 15 year old girls. And, and we were trying to publish a dystopian. The genre that was going out of style and publishers weren't looking for dystopian books, especially YA dystopian books, especially, especially uh, a YA dystopian book written by authors with no prior experience. Two authors, by the way, which uh, traditional publishers don't really like uh, for various reasons. And um, also, uh, to minors and there's this whole host of things with that and so they really don't like writing like publishing books with that not only that but just because you are a minor because you don't have the experience there's assumptions that are made um, that your book isn't well polished so that it would either a take more editing or b isn't really original most people still, to this day, assume uh, teenage girl writing with fiction. So a lot of people kind of assume this was very fan fiction -y, which it wasn't. I never really wrote fan fiction. My writing partner did um, when she was, but I never did. Our book wasn't really based on any properties. Yes, there were inspirations from properties, but not any more than any other normal book in the YA sphere. So when you want to be traditionally published, what you should do and what is expected is first you get an agent. That's pretty much the only way you can get traditionally published. There are some exceptions. There are some smaller presses that you don't need agents and those are called unsolicited uh, submissions. So for unsolicited submissions, you could submit directly to the publishers. However, those are usually red flags <laughs> um, when that is, and I will talk about that in a sec. Um, but pretty much we were submitting to agents, okay? So this was all being submitted to agents. We weren't submitting to publishers directly. It's very unprofessional to do that, especially again for young first time authors. So we were submitting to a bunch of agents, looked on a bunch of stuff, you know, credited agents and all that jazz and uh we weren't getting anything from them we got some really nice rejection letters but uh we were never even requested for a partial or a full um and a lot of them just didn't even get back to us and um and i tried really hard to make sure that everything that i did met their requirements and all that jazz but sometimes you just don't get a response that just happens well anyways um we do this after we go through about 10 rejections or so we usually did another draft or after a big uh, problem with it we go through another draft uh so we're editing we're submitting we're doing all this stuff and um both my writing partner and i actually end up submitting to what we thought were small presses that's how they market themselves and uh, we got accepted and we were very, very excited uh, until <laughs> they said, well, um, you have to pay usually a couple hundred to like a thousand dollars. So I, I think the average that they would always say is like a thousand two hundred dollars. Okay. And we're just like, we're too broke high school students. Our parents weren't going to pay a single penny. Um, and we're like, I'm sorry, no, we can't do that. No, we, I think we even made like a bargain with ourselves that we would pay a hundred dollars. <laughs> That's it. Nothing more. And, um, they were like, yeah, sorry, we can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. We ended up ignoring those messages and just had to move on. Um, and it was really smart that we did because those were vanity presses. Um, and we were 
so desperate. We almost fell for them. Luckily though, one, I, I have to admit, this, this was mostly on Grace. I think she really brought me down to earth on this because I was very, I really, really wanted to get this book published. I was really, I felt really, really strongly about it. Uh, I was almost willing to pretty much empty out my bank account for it. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I was smart about it and everything. Um, but Grace was a lot more like, no, we're not going to do this. And, um, thank God for her. I, I might've honestly have been scammed, um, at that point. I was still very naive about it and very desperate, um, especially because I was the one, uh, sending a lot of the submissions and also took the emails harder, I think. Um, and maybe I'll talk about more about that in another video, but for now, just knew that. Okay, so we're doing this. It's about a couple, it's about a year later, right? So, uh, we, my writing partner, I believe, I believe she was the one who sent this one out, sent it to what I now know is a vanity press. I didn't fully realize that at the time though, but, um, we were talking about it and we're like we're not paying any money and because at that point we had made we we had learned enough that we realized we should not be paying a single penny and they're like well there's this competition where you can get your book published for free and if you win or if you get in the first two places so we're like freak it let's do that and they said actually we read your book we think you guys have a really good chance of getting in and winning so um we did. We wait about a year, and at the end of it, uh, we get third place. I don't know how many people submitted. I don't know if there was like five submissions and we got third place. I don't know if there was only three. I don't know. But we got third place. And so we, we barely made the cutoff, but we were, the reason why it took so long was because we were in the top, and we were in the top actually for quite some time which did give us some confidence, but also was like really crushing because ours was just like so close to not being published worthy. Um, in fact, it was so close that we had, there was three judges and they would rate all the books. And um, one of them even wrote, uh, rated us as number one. And the other two rated us, I think, one rated us three and one rated us two. Somehow that got us in the bottom. I don't really know. But yeah, we, we were actually really close. Um, and it, it really sucked. Uh, there were three judges and it, it really hurt because we were very, very close to finally getting our book published, winning a competition. And getting our book published and um and that just didn't happen uh but what that did give us is we did get feedback on it we got professional feedback on it and when we got that we stopped submitting and uh we did a, f a huge draft we added chapters we did a lot of stuff so we completely reworked it because one of our big issues was pacing and we wanted to fix our pacing. In the meantime, I was learning more about the industry. I was learning about more of why things are getting rejected and all that because, you know, at this point it's been almost two years and actually almost three years at that point by the time we, we finally got our rejection. And uh, well, we got the results from the contest. It wasn't really a rejection. So it did pretty good. Um, but it was, um, it was difficult. And um, so we, we read a draft and we started submitting again. Um, and we were also at this time, I was looking more into self-publishing. At first, I didn't want to do self-publishing. Uh, 
mostly because it seemed like a lot of work. I was very, very inexperienced. Um, and I, I didn't necessarily want to go through that. I didn't want to, you know, be responsible for all of that. But as I was learning more and I was doing more and I saw that self-publishing was, you know, much more respected, it was much more popular, it was much more accessible, I seriously started committing, uh, you know, trying to, um, I was seriously considering it. I was doing research, how much did everything cost? Figured at the time it would cost us around $3,000. Um, 3000 to 5000 is what at the time I estimated. And I talked to Grace about it. And I said, all right, here are options. I laid everything down on the table. I said, we can go back into the trenches of submissions and redo it, or we can do the self-publishing route and we can work on our author platform. And that's actually when this channel started. Uh, yeah, when I was junior in high school, I believe it was the summer of my junior year. Um, so yeah, th about three years in. And, um, and we decided, okay, we're going to try to traditionally publish it, but uh, we realized we couldn't afford it, pretty much. And that's one of the things that I really want to talk about, and that is the kind of the myth about self-publishing. Um, and it's not that self-publishing isn't valid, it's not that you can't find success with self-publishing, it's not even uh, so much that self-publishing is illegitimate in any sort of way. The The problem with self-publishing is truly, there's, there's two main problems. One is the cost and two is um, the lack of knowledge a lot of people have about it and the industry. So what do I mean about the cost? It's, it's a very classes system, quite frankly. It is not more accessible than getting traditionally published, if we're being completely honest. Um, yes, anyone can publish it. Anyone can publish it if they have the right amount. Well, can't you just upload it? I, you know, I saw things on Kindle Connect and you can just upload it. Um, no, it's not that simple. You can't just upload your stuff. Um, First of all, if you want it to be good and well polished and make any money, you have to put in marketing costs. You have to um, usually put in editing costs, cover design. Uh, you have to, if you're doing Ingram Spark, you literally have to pay. It's cheap, it's only $45, but you have to pay that. If you want to order any books, you have to pay for those books. If, I mean, I can go on and on and on. Also, with Kindle Connect, for instance, that's the free service that everyone talks about, you can only sell it on Amazon. So if you legit want to get your book out to the most amount of readers and you, you want to get out your book because you want people to read it, not because like, oh, this is just like a fun little hobby thing and I'm just going to order a couple of books for my friends and family, even that, that's still like a cost, by the way. So there's that, but um, yeah. That sort of stuff is completely fine, you know, completely, you know, accessible. You could easily do that. No question. That sort of stuff has been around forever. Um, yeah, you could have always, you know, wrote a book, print it out, and bind it yourself. You could always do that too. It's not very practical and it still costs money. However you look at it, you're always going to end up spending money if you want it to be any way remotely successful. There's also the time element as well. Sure, you could, first of all, you would have to find people who are willing to do things for free for you, um, which is not easy. <laughs> and a lot of people aren't professionals or experienced with it. And so either one, you could publish a book for free theoretically, self-publishing. Using Amazon, you can only sell it on Amazon, which <sighs> that is why they make it free. So you only can sell your book on Amazon. I can make an entire video about that and how it's kind of a scam, but not really a scam, more like monopoly tactics. 
anyways um but i mean any way you look at it you're paying money you cannot get away from it there are ways you can reduce costs um and there are certain things you can do to make your book better that includes costs or will sell more but that is another cost so if you have a couple of thousand dollars that you can spend Sure, self-publishing is a completely, you know, might actually be better for you, especially if you're struggling in the traditional market. And of course, um, not everyone has that. I didn't have that. My writing partner and I combined didn't have that. One, we were very young. We didn't have a lot of money. Two, our parents didn't have a lot of money. So we decided, all right, well, we're going to try the traditional publishing. We go in. Again, we do round after round. We do, I think, one or two more drafts after this. And um, nothing, absolutely nothing. And we got some pretty uh, heartbreaking rejections to the point where when people did send back feedback on why they didn't want to pick us up, it, I mean, it was things like tone, which when I had other people read it, um, not tone necessarily, but voice, sorry, not tone, but voice. And, um, which really made me upset because I'm like, you mean my writing style, <laughs> my entire writing style isn't good. It just doesn't vibe with you. Okay. Um, I mean, we were getting stuff like that and which really hurt because when I gave it to other people at this point, I was in college. And so I was around other English majors, other people who have done you know, writing and professors and everything, voice was the one thing that everyone said that was really good. And I'm like, I I don't even know what to think. I know not everyone jives with everything, but it was, it was heartbreaking when you just hear it was like, yeah, the story is good, the character is good and all that. But I just don't jive with the voice. It's like, really, <laughs> really? And you don't even request like a full end or a partial even yeah when you get not only i think we totally i i didn't keep track in the beginning but i think totally we got like 48 rejections um almost 50 rejections and not just oh we got 50 rejections but we got like some full you know which is kind of like the next step or we got some partials we you know we got some requests to see more we didn't get a single one of those it was 45, almost 50 complete rejections. And it wasn't because we submitted things wrong or whatever, or it didn't be requirements for the most part. No, I'm talking, I did my research. I saw what they wanted. It kind of fitted. A lot of them even said, this is stuff they like, but there's one or two elements that they just didn't want to pick up. Um, and uh, yeah. It just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. And at this point, I mean, the market has moved so far from YA dystopia and I'm like, no one's ever going to pick this up. And I realized that in the traditional market, at the very least, there's no way this was happening. And I had this re revelation around my sophomore year, junior year of college. So I put it on holes, I put it on the back burner, and um, I was like, that's it. It's just never gonna get published. It's just not gonna happen. There's no way we can ever get this published. We can't afford to self-publish it, and no one's gonna pick up our book. They're not gonna wanna take a risk on us. It's just gonna be on the back burner. And even though at this point, I still, very much loved our book and I still thought our book was good. I was really questioning that at this point and I figured it's just a bad book. It's just not marketable. I, I just can't get this book published. It's impossible. I can't do it. Um, and that sucks. And I've had, I've had heard, heard other authors going through similar things with this and realizing mm, their books just isn't good. It's just not marketable, whatever and they put it in a folder and they never look at it again or whatever 
or maybe they do look at it again they realize it was never that good or whatever and um that's what i thought this was gonna be and i was planning that at this point i started working on another project and um, that wasn't technically it that isn't well it isn't a novel it's a collection of short stories and poems set in a similar set in the same world but it, that's a discussion for another day um but anyways so uh, during this time i a lot of things changed for me a lot of things happened i got like two jobs and i was able to actually start saving up money and um you know i would tell people yeah i wrote a book but i, I never published it you know I'm always downplaying my ability and people would be like oh my god it's so amazing and why don't you get it published and i have to explain every single time uh that it's just bad and i'm like it's just not good enough fast forward to about a couple of months ago right haven't even touched the book i just completely ignored it i don't even work on other projects that i wanted to do because i wanted to make this book into um a series i had a lot of ideas for it i had a lot of ideas for this world and different characters um but I, I i ended up not putting any of that and um and just start working on a different project and continuing my schoolwork, doing a lot of other things and um so two years pretty much go by right this this has been gone for two years i pretty much haven't worked on this book haven't looked at this book since my sophomore year of high school sorry not high school college <laughs> my sophomore year of college about two years ago and in this time i'm gonna be graduating soon you know i'm like all right i know better now i've had more experience now i've had more education on the subject i've read more books i wrote more stuff i've learned more craft i've read other people's work blah 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 blah, blah. And, um, of course, because I'm graduating in March, I start having a crisis. Fuck, what am I going to do? And I start really worrying about stuff. And, um, and I can't sleep one night. And because I'm just so worried about the future. And, um, that night I'm meeting with some friends and, um, I tell them about my book or maybe it wasn't that night it was that day but um and i tell them about my book and i tell them it never got published and basically i've explained everything i've explained to you in a actually more condensed version but regardless and they suggest that what if i tried a kickstarter campaign and i was like i can't do that no one's gonna want to donate <laughs> Um, and they were like, well, I would donate and I'm sure, you know, everyone on our team would want to donate, you know, and I was just like, I don't know, I, I'm not sure about this. And also at this point I was like, my book's just not good. It just sucks, right? And, um, it's, it's not good enough. It wasn't good enough to get traditionally published, therefore, why should I even try to self-publish it, right? It's it's just not good. And um, then I go back and I can't sleep at night. And so I pull up the file of my book and I thought, you know what, I'll just read this and, you know, like cringe at how bad it was, you know, and just read it as time capsule, right? So I start reading it and um, there were, you know, some lines that weren't very, you know, well done and there were some grammatical and spelling errors and all that. And, um, but I was reading it and I fell in love with the book again and I started crying. Uh, because I was like, fuck, this is actually good. Why is it still good after all this time? You know, it's it's not perfect, but it's it's still really good. And I still think, 
people would enjoy this book because I enjoy it so much. And when a writer says they enjoy their work, <laughs> you know they feel a certain way about it. And I'm not saying like it's the greatest masterpiece of all time and you know it's a crime that it never got published or anything but I just get really upset and especially after I read why I read a lot more why dystopia I've read a lot of other books I'm like why is this so much worse than all of these what makes this book so much worse so unpublishable when all these other books I've read good and bad do get published I'm like what is the thing that prevents it from from getting published like what is it like what is actually wrong with this and I, I just started thinking and I'm like well it's probably the market and young author I can go on and on two authors again that's a risk and I'm like who says I can't self-publish it and then I'm like well I don't have any really have any money and then um, cause I, I did have a little nest egg built up for myself, um, but I was saving that money because student loan payments, like around the exact same time I was going through all this and I was like, but I can't, but I, I, I don't know what to do. And, um, I got really lucky pretty much. And Biden, uh, signed like the reduced loan payments pretty much like canceling some student debt um, and it's still bullshit, it's still not enough. Um, but what it does do is potentially take off $20,000, 10,000 to $20,000 off of my loan, which means uh, my remaining balance would be payable. I didn't really have a lot of student loans, that's a different story, but, um, and I was like, fuck <laughs> I could actually do this I could actually spend three thousand to five thousand potentially you know for a temporary time and I was like there's no way I'm gonna make any of this money back I I still can't do it and I, I tried doing and I looked at the numbers and I was like I I still can't justify this I have to assume my book is going to make zero dollars. Freak, I have to assume that my book isn't going to make more than maybe a couple hundred. If I'm fucking lucky and I do everything perfectly, maybe. If I'm lucky, I can make a hundred dollars, not including any of the expenses, just, you know, like, I, I should not expect making a lot of money from this. And I think about this for a while and I'm like, no, I really tried everything. In the back of my head, I realized there was one, one option out there that I haven't tried. And it's a long shot 